Okay, I got the uh, steering columns on, shock are on, and uh, the ears. So uh, there's certain steps you gotta take to put these on, and um, I'll quickly go over them. So the way I find it's the easiest is to uh, not put this on, take it off, and then take your shocks, slide them through, and put the ears on, then slide the shocks up top, and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, here's the bike here on wheels. You can say it's a uh, rolling frame, I guess. So, uh, you notice here, I just got it leaning right now against my motocross, but uh, I don't have the kickstand or nothing. But um, here I've taken the uh, handlebars off and that plate that goes on top here. And uh, the reason being is, here, like these new handlebars come with a new post. I don't know what you want to call this right here, but a bracket anyway, where the knobs hook up to so you can pull the handlebars down. So here's the old one right here which was uh, no good. Uh, so I bought new handlebar and it came with this but the problem is is that the bolts are not the same width as the old one. So I had to notch out inside here a little bit. But no big deal. I got it to fit. But now I'm running into another problem. And that problem is this bracket. You remember this one? This is the one that the light goes inside here and indicates where you got your turn signals on. Well, now it won't really fit. See? The reason being, I think, is this or these, this little, little tab here, right here. I have to grind those down right here so that it goes more against flush against this back side here. Not a big deal. Just a little bit, a uh, little bit more work. And also, what I noticed on the frame. Now on the other side right here you've got this metal tab that goes down and it stops against these sides right here so what that does is prevent you from oversteering or for the steering the handlebars the wheel to go all the way and hit the frame this part this part here hit the frame so it's kind of like a stop I don't have it it's gone See, it's been broken off or something I'm not too sure why I have to go over to your old buddy's place. He's got a welder, and I'll either build up some weld here, or just get a piece of metal and weld it to this. So that way it's going to be hanging down, and these stops here will hit it. So and that's all I've done so far. It's uh, one of those things, you know, you get a little bit of money, buy a few parts, and put them on, and uh, it takes a while. I'm in no rush. Uh, when it gets done, it gets done. Everything's on right now. Well, not everything, but a few parts are on the frame. And the front wheels, back wheel, the shocks. Got the steering post bearings. I got these on. And then once I get the, my uh, handlebars on, and then I'll put the headlight, tail light. I'll put the wiring harness in. I'll, um, hmm. Not too sure about the uh, seats, probably wait, but I'll put the gas tank in, and then, oh yes, the ignition, i got to figure that out. The ignition I've got, right here, I don't have a key, and I've sent an email over to that, uh, I don't know, what's it called, Honda Keys or something like that, and apparently this guy can get you the keys for all makes and models. Apparently you just get the number that's off the tumbler, which is this number right here, and from there he can make you a key. Well, I gave him the number and he never responded to my emails, 
And then I finally sent another email, and he said he came again. So great. So mine's in 1977. All the ignition switches I can find on eBay, brand new, are good for up to 1976. Now, is there a difference between 76 and 77? Apparently there is. But uh, it's getting to the point where I might take a chance and buy one anyway. Because the wiring harness looks the same on the 76 as the 77. But my other option is to go to a locksmith and just get them to take those uh, pins out this year. And I can use any key. But uh, we'll see. And uh, other than that, uh, that's it for now. Okay, so I've got the fenders on. Bought these off of eBay. They're not in bad shape for the price I paid, I guess. A little scratched up, but uh, kind of hard to find a, you know really good fenders for these now. The aftermarket ones, I'm not too sure if they fit, and I just didn't want to bother. Now the uh, taillight bracket, or the single light, I guess, or I'm sorry, the taillight bracket, or license plate bracket, whatever you want to call it, that one is aftermarket. It's not a bad, I, li I like it, I've got it on my other CT70, it's fine. The only thing is that on this one, for some odd reason, it didn't quite line up for that bolt in the very back here. Of this one so I had to drill a hole but uh, I was okay with that because uh, it's a used fender it's not perfect it's got dents here and there down the road uh, maybe in a few years from now I might try that chrome plating I see you can buy kits so maybe I'll uh, take these fenders fix them all up and then give it a try but that's uh, way down the road anyway so I got the fender on rear fender Rear tail light is on, as you can tell, shocks, tires, brakes, front fender, handlebars, headlight. So it's coming along pretty good. Next step is uh, probably going to put the coil in the gas tank and the wiring. Now I've got the ignition switch. Now for the ignition switch, the one I had in there, I didn't have the key. So I just went to a locksmith and he made me a key. So uh, I was going to try through that uh, website, that Honda guy, but uh, he said he couldn't get it. So he couldn't, he said the number that was on the switch didn't match anything he had. So I don't know. Anyway, I had it done by a locksmith here in Canada. Wasn't too bad. Cost me $20 plus, two, plus uh, $3 for two keys. So and there you have it. Anyway, so the uh, it keeps going on, so um, pretty soon the frame will be all together, and the next step will be to work on the engine. Now, the uh, these YouTube clips, I've noticed that, if you've noticed, I'm not spending too much time on the frame, as in explaining, because I did that with the 73, and there's not much difference. But what I'm going to do on this one, though, is I'm going to focus more on the engine. Because the engine on this one needs a total rebuild. I've got no compression on it. So it's either uh, piston ring, piston, or valve. Either one, I'm going to have to spend some time and money on it. So, uh, and I'll have more detailed videos for the engine. Okay, I'm running into a bit of an issue with these handlebars. Uh, I get these online. Um, you know, what the problem is, is that if you look at your old handlebars, you'll see that you've got a hole underneath. It's for the brackets that go on, go on top of your uh, handlebars, like the uh, on and off switch, uh, the turn signals. On this side, of course, is your throttle. Now, what... The way it was designed is inside your throttle, and that switch that goes here, there's a pin that goes into a hole underneath your handlebar. And what that does is prevents it from twisting on the bars. Now, on these handlebars, for some reason, that hole is up top. Right here. Which is incorrect. 
So you're going to have to drill them out. But the good thing is, is that the distance between the top hole and the end of the handlebar bar is actually correct. So just take a bit, drill bit, the same size as this hole, and just use this one as a pilot hole. So just put it down there and drill through, and you should be okay. But uh, yeah, this is uh, one of the things I've just found out on these bars here. Because I'm starting to put the controls on. As you can tell, it's got quite a bit on it. But still, a lot to do. Um, so, in a way, that's where it is right now. 